Hey there, Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And I just got back from San Francisco this weekend and fortunately I got to go shooting with one of my buddies, Barry Blanchard. We went to go down to Half Moon Bay and we got to go to Pigeon Point and some different places there. We did some aerial photography and we also got to uh, shoot off a couple of shots with my Canon 5D Mark III. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to process these images today. I'm just gonna take one set of photographs that I took. I'm gonna do a little HDR on it but I'm going to pop it into Camera Raw and show you how to take a landscape and look, make it look incredibly natural and realistic so it doesn't look like um, an HDR at all. It just looks like a nicely exposed photograph with a lot of details and the shadows and highlights. So don't forget, subscribe to us right here on our channel and uh, I also put new videos up here every week. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's jump right into Lightroom, which is where I'm starting here. So I'm in Lightroom and you can see there's a series of photos I've taken. Uh, some of these are, you know, landscapes, some are portrait. We've got all kinds of different things here. Um, you can see we've got these shots here. Some of these have got the lighthouse. Let's zoom in and have a look. And you can see right now I'm inside of a Lightroom. So you can see there's the regular exposure there. And then there's the overexposed and then there's the underexposed shot. So the underexposed shot gives a lot more detail up here in the clouds and in the sky, which sometimes gets lost in photography because of course the sky is usually a lot darker, or a lot brighter than the rest of the photo. So I'm just gonna pop these down a little bit and we're gonna move up and let's just select a photograph to work with. Um, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna go for one of these ones here just because I like this, um, let me work on these ones. I don't see, you know, the lighthouse or anything in the ones I'm going to pick here but I just kind of like the composition it's kind of a nice little composition and you can see the sky here it's a really interesting sky so what we're going to do is we're going to grab these but let me just go down a couple more just see what else we've got here all right we've got a different composition yeah I'm going to grab these three right here so I'm going to select them and you can see I've got a regular exposure here you can see I've got one there that's underexposed one that's overexposed so grab the three of these go up to photo and we're gonna choose edit in, and then we're gonna go down to merge to HDR in Photoshop. Now you could do the same thing here from Bridge. I just happen to be working in Lightroom because um, I like working in Lightroom. People often ask me what's the difference between Bridge and Lightroom. In a nutshell, Lightroom can handle a lot of images. It's also a catalog and a library where Bridge is really designed for only handling a few images at a time. So if you're taking a lot of photos, Put them in Lightroom, you can catalog, find them, do a lot of different things in there. So it's, it's just much more useful. So here we are here in the Merge to HDR Pro, and we can see that we've got the three photographs. It's showing the zero, it's showing the minus two, and the plus two. So what I'm going to do is we're going to zoom in a little bit here. So let's just click on the little plus button here. And when you move around in the water here, if you hit the space bar, you can actually drag around and have a look at a higher magnification here. And one of the things that sometimes happens is this water, because of this movement and there's three shots, even though they happen in very close succession, we can get what's known as ghosting, where the uh, different detail is on different photographs. So what we do is just click on Remove Ghosts, and you'll see how that just cleans up that water line there. That's really nice. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our mode is set to 32-bit, and we're going to complete the tone mapping in Camera Raw. Now, if you don't want to do that and you want to actually do your manipulations inside of Lightroom, turn that option off and then just open this as a 32-bit file and then you can bring it back into Lightroom and then in Lightroom you can do exactly the same settings that we're going to do here in Camera Raw. So why am I choosing to do this in Camera Raw and not Lightroom? The reason is because if uh, some of the people watching happen to just have Camera Raw or also maybe you want to do compositing, go back and do some other things in Photoshop, it gives you that flexibility. Now the result you're going to get from Camera Raw and Lightroom would be identical. So in this case, I'm going to turn the tone mapping back on, which means it's going to go into Camera Raw next. And actually, I'm going to take this off the 32. I'm going to drop it down to 16-bit. Here you can see different settings here. And if I go down to here to 8-bit, you can also see different settings. But if we want to do the Camera Raw one, we're going to choose 32-bit, turn that option on, and now we're going to click Tone and ACR. So what it's doing right now, before it opens in Camera Raw, it's merging these photographs together. There's three photographs we're taking in 16-bit. It's merging them together into an HDR file, which stands for High Dynamic Range. And also that means there's a lot more detail. It's a 32-bit file. 
Uh, if some of this is a little fast and over your head, I, I have a video on PhotoshopCafe.com, which is um, Photoshop and HDR. It's a four and a half hour video where I get much more detail into the whole HDR process. So here I'm just kind of showing you a little workflow and hopefully you can, don't get lost. And this is also new in CC, is the ability here to open this directly with an HDR file inside of Camera Raw. So here we are in the Camera Raw right now. And you can see that overall it's looking pretty good. It's a pretty well exposed photograph. I'd like to see a little more detail up here maybe, and maybe open up these rocks a little bit, but let's, let's play around and have a look. First thing I like to do is set my color temperature. To make sure your color is zeroed out, you can see all your white balance settings are here. If we choose the uh, daylight, you'll see here, boom, that'll show a nice daylight white balance. Or if you want to be precise, go up, grab this little eyedropper tool, look for an area of white or neutral gray in the photograph and just click and that will set the white balance. You can see actually that was really close to what we set for the um, for that setting. All right, so we've got our white balance set. Let's have a look at bringing out the detail now. So what we want to do is grab our exposure. We can move this around a little bit. We can brighten it or darken it. I'm actually going to take it slightly darker than what I normally would. And well, before I do that, let me show you, because we we're in the 32-bit, see how much dynamic range we've got? We've got this amazing amount of dynamic range. Okay, so I'm just going to take this down to about there. Now, once again, this is a little duller than I would normally go. And I'm going to show you why, because I'm going to recover our highlights, pull our highlights down a little bit. And now we can see we've got some good detail here in our clouds, kind of showing this area, and also in our reflections. Let's open up our shadows a little bit. I'm just going to pull that down. I don't want to get too crazy because I'm going to brighten this up at the end. And we can see we've got our um, detail showing there. So the next thing you'll notice that things are looking kind of grayish. We're not really seeing the solid blacks in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black and I'm going to slide it down. Now notice up here in the histogram you can see we've got a lot of space here and we're just starting to hit there. We can grab these little arrows and this will show the areas where it's clipping or where it's going to pure black or we're missing out that detail. So you can take that black up to right there where it's just going to black and if you print this out this will block these in and fill them in nicely. The other way you can do it is if you hold down the Alt key, or that would be the Option key, you can move it. And you can see the clipping right there. So let's bring it to that point where it's just starting to clip our blacks. Let's do the same thing with the whites, and this will clean it up. As we increase these whites, notice you can see it's starting to clip. And that's because this little triangle is turned on up here. The other option is to hold down the Alt or the Option key, depending if we're on your Mac or Windows, and we can move it to your C, where it's clipping or forcing it. So I'm going to take it right there. So this is showing our full dynamic range. Notice our histogram isn't clipping or being cut off on either end. Maybe a little in the shadows, but that's okay. So we've pretty much set a lot of our settings there. Now we might just go up and just take the exposure, just brighten up a little bit. I don't even mind that. That's actually pretty good where it is. I'm just going to give it a little touch. So now what if you wanted to brighten up some of these areas or darken the areas up here? Well, there's different things we can do. One of them I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this gradient, the graduated filter, and I'm going to go up under the little option here and hit zero. And zero just zeroes everything out. So I'm going to start in the top and I'm just going to, um, well, I should take the exposure down a little bit. So we're setting something for it. Now we just click and hold the shift key. We'll constrain it to straight up and down. But notice there's a little bit of a tilt and we'll fix that in a bit. So let's just actually take it at that angle there. And now that we've added this little thing, we can move it around by clicking and dragging. And notice if we do that, that continues further down. I'm going to take it to about there. And now we can play around with this. We could take the exposure all the way down, which doesn't look good. But I'm just going to take it a little bit just to give it a little, little bit more power up here in the sky and just a little bit more detail in there. So that's the other thing we could do there. Um, another option we could do is we could grab our little adjustment brush. We have a up here and we could actually paint some of these areas in. Let me just show you. So if I grab my adjustment brush, I'm going to change the exposure to up. And I'm actually going to turn on the mask option and turn on overlay. So we'll see when I paint here, you'll see it'll turn red. And uh, see that? That's kind of looking pretty good. But I'm just going to undo that for a second. Why am I doing that? Because I'm going to scroll down here and we've got an option called auto mask. I'm going to turn on auto mask and now what it's going to do is going to detect the edges of those rocks. Let me drop this down a little bit, smaller brush there, just painting in there, and it's doing its best to detect all that. 
All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna turn the mask off and the overlay option off so we can't see that anymore. And now I'm gonna go back up and then I'm gonna adjust the exposure. Notice I can change that exposure and brighten up those rocks. So I'm just gonna give them just a little bit more oomph just by opening them up a little bit there. And um, if I turn on the overlay, you'll see this little pin. And then we click on that little pin there and that can actually show us where our adjustments are. So with that on, let me just go up here. I can actually continue. I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger and I can paint up here if I want to. See how I'm applying that adjustment up there? I can apply it in here and now I'm literally dodging and burning or brightening up these areas that I wanna brighten up by using this tool here. So it's a really great little tool. Now we can also do the opposite with that. If I click new and I add another one, we can take another brush and maybe darken it down a little bit. And let's increase this just to kind of darken down here. But what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take our flow setting and I'm gonna turn our flow setting down a little bit. So what that means is it's gonna apply it not full strength, so it's gonna apply it less than full strength. So I'm gonna take it here and I'm just gonna start across there and I'm gonna paint that. And then I'm gonna paint down. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding it in. But because I've got the flow set low, I can go over here and I can do a second amount here. And the more I begin to paint this, the darker it gets there. So that gives me just a little bit more control than just uh, painting it all at once. So you can see that. And if we um, turn our mask on, you can see there's where the mask is and there's where it's off. So you can see that. And uh, of course, if we turn the density down, and we turn the density down a little bit, it will actually paint less. See how that actually decreased the density? And if I increase it here, it will actually make it darker. So the density is almost like opacity. So I've got the flow on a little bit there and I'm just starting to paint that down. And I'm kind of liking that. So we can have a look here. Um, we've got some different options that we can see. We can see the before and we can see the after and see how we're really just adding some nice tonality in here. And we can just click back there on that little key there and notice that that will actually split us in between. So these are kind of new inside of um, Photoshop where we can actually look at the before and after in there and just kind of uh, cycle through them like that at different ways. So it's kind of a fun way of, of previewing our images. So that's looking pretty good. One thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go back up again and I'm just going to click away on a hand tool or anything like that and it gets us out of these little custom adjustments and I can just tweak the overall exposure if I just want to brighten the overall image up because now when I apply this it's going to take all our adjustments, our little gradients and our little brushes and adjust all of that. And the cool thing about this is that right now we're still, look, it says we're, um, what well, doesn't show us up here, but we're in an HDR space. So now I'm going to open this inside of Photoshop. Now here's, um, we're just going to click OK. And so you can see there's kind of like the before, the, the uh, adjustments in the tone mapping, and there's after. Let's have a look up there. Let me close this little group here. We'll just shut that down, close tab group. You can get a better idea of where we've been going with this image. So right now we're still in a 32-bit space up there. So what we want to do now is just convert it down to an 8 or a 16-bit where we can start to use it. So we're just going to go under the image and I'm going to change the mode. Let's just do it to 8-bit and we're going to merge it. And this is the last step you're going to have here. You're going to have your tone mapping again. And if you wanted, you can see it starts getting a little bit crazy, nuclear. And, uh, you know, the kind of thing that we were trying to avoid with HDRs to not make it look like HDR. So what we're going to do is go exposure gamma, set exposure to zero, gamma to one, and then click OK. And now it's going to bring it to an 8-bit file. So there's our photograph. There's a couple more things we could do. One, let's crop this down a little bit because we want to straighten it because it's a little crooked. So let's just bring it in a little bit and also clean up our composition. And I'm going to take outside the corner there, click and drag until I get that nicely lined up with that grid. See that? Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to hit enter and it's going to just crop that down so we're not so crooked anymore. Actually, have a look here. I think I did something wrong. I took it too far, actually. So let's, or we could just grab our straighten tool. Let's do it this way. Just grab the straighten tool, drag across and release it. And that will hit enter. And that's another way we can actually sit there and straighten that photograph. Notice, notice it still looks a little weird. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to undo that one more time. And that's because we've got a little bit of a curvature on the lens. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go under the filter and then under the filter we're going to go to lens correction and let's just fix this once and for all. So we've got to turn our little, uh, notice here, we've got to turn our grid on, turn on our grid here and then we can see this, notice it's crooked but it's more than just that isn't it? Let's go to the uh, custom settings and we're going to take the uh, rotation. So let's just change the angle here very kind of crazy or we'll just grab a little tool here if we want to do it so we don't have to try and follow the craziness and that'll straighten that up but notice it's just a little curve so we can get rid of this if you go this way it'll bulge it out if you go this way it'll pinch it in so notice that I just tweaked that a little bit and we're seeing this is nice and it's looking good so I can click OK now I could have avoided that the way I could have avoided that actually is to have gone into camera raw first for each individual image and applied a camera lens correction, just using an autocorrect for that, and then merging it together. But here we've got the same result doing it this way. So you can see we've got a, a nice little adjustment there on our photograph. I'm not doing a vignette or anything around the edge. I mean, those are fine if you want to apply those to your photo to apply a little bit more attention to the middle. But you can see that this is a nicely exposed photo. The white balance is right. We've got good details in our highlights, our reflections areas like that. Good details in our shadows so we can see our information. So that's just a little workflow there working with camera raw and HDR images on a landscape photo. Don't forget, subscribe like and comment this video and I'll see you later. Um, follow us at Facebook and Twitter at Photoshop Cafe. Until then, I'll see you at the cafe. Bye.